working on it. Thank you. How's my hair? Oh, right. Yes, yes. I'm very excited to be I'm so excited. Wow, wow. Rox, tell me, please, bo w Polsce ludzie się boją diagnozować, ponieważ uważają, że jest to pewne piętno. Czy też się z tym spotkałaś, że jak już dostałaś diagnozę, to ludzie inaczej na ciebie na przykład patrzyli, że to ci przyniosło coś złego, a może wręcz przeciwnie. Może właśnie chcesz powiedzieć, że warto jest się diagnozować, bo to w wielu kwestiach pomaga. I think it is both and it depends who you're speaking with. So within the community that we've built and within the four walls of our little home, we also have an autistic team that lives with us, which is Eldis, my, my stepkid. We're so neurodivergent friendly. We embrace it. We have so much fun. Of course, online in our community, there's no stigma. It's just the joy of discovering other people that think like you. However, I still feel ashamed in a work situation if I arrive late to say, I'm sorry, I have ADHD. I struggle with time. I still feel ashamed to say that. So I will lie and make up an excuse. Trains are running late and I'm sweaty and I'm anxious. So I think we're still working to end the stigma, but that's why I think we feel so grateful to do what we do because in this tiny little corner of the world we're just chipping away at it people that see that content or, or another ADHD um, awareness account they're going to start to learn and they're going to start treating people differently czyli warto jest się diagnozować możemy tak powiedzieć polskim czytelnikom yes i think so because it allows you to stop living under shame so really i mean, I went through a massive shift and I just started crying um, when I realized it was ADHD because my only story before diagnosis was I'm broken, I'm a failure, I'm behind at life, something's wrong with me. In my really dark moments, I don't even know, like, perhaps this world would be better without me and I don't add anything. To get the diagnosis, to get the language not only means that we're able to have this wonderful relationship and support each other and it's made me a better stepmom because I understand in a certain way um, autism as well now through this lens, but I don't have to hate myself anymore. I get to just think I'm pretty okay and just that will change the way that you walk into a room, the risks that you take, the stories that you're willing to tell, absolutely life-changing, so yeah. Bardzo dziękuję Ci za te słowa. Ja po diagnozie przeżyłam żałobę nad swoim dzieciństwem. Bardzo płakałam, że wcześniej mnie nikt nie uratował przed myślami samobójczymi, przed depresją. I okazało się, że właściwie neuroróżnorodna, to znaczy, że jestem normalna, że to nie jest tak, że to nie ja nie pasuję do świata. Po prostu każdy z nas jest jakoś neuroróżnorodny i ze mną wszystko jest w porządku. Po prostu ja mam inne oprogramowanie. I to mi dało ogromną ulgę i też postanowiłam edukować na temat ADHD. Później dostałam diagnozę autyzmu jako już matka w ciąży. Też się troszeczkę załamałam, bo chciałam wiedzieć o tym wszystkim dużo wcześniej. I bardzo wam dziękuję za to, że napisaliście książkę i że ona wyszła w Polsce, dlatego że ludzie, którzy nie są związani ze światem neuroróżnorodności, zaczęli o tym świecie po prostu mówić. I w szkołach bardzo dużo zaczęło się zmieniać. You do some as well for, for Sib, but uh, thank you for sharing um, your journey. It's incredible to have people being honest and talking about it and the feeling of grief I absolutely relate to. I often talk about the joy and the grief of diagnosis. The joy is I make sense. I deserve help. I deserve to be here. Um, I might even be able to add something to this world, even with the basic things that I struggle with and the grief is oh my gosh all those years I grew up feeling broken feeling a failure having people kind of hate me and ostracize me which led me to some very dark places some of my own bad decisions 
all of that pain perhaps could have been uh, avoided. However, it's an absolute privilege to speak about it now. And the pain that I have gone through is what makes me so passionate to write and talk now. I think I've heard um, Rox a few times mention the the grieving process of, of when she got diagnosed and how different things could have been had she have known earlier. Um, and I think, you know, even linked into the the stigma around ADHD. Um, and that's why we believe it to be quite powerful for for both kind of perspectives with the book because so much of the negative thoughts and do I, do I, should I be here and am I lazy, am I useless, will, will I amount to anything, often will come from external sources. It's what people, what society has been telling you the, your whole life. So, so whilst a diagnosis clearly is helpful and it will help you find the language to be kinder to yourself, it's also so important to educate everybody else and, and those that love someone with ADHD or autism or anyone um, who's neurodivergent because that's where the messaging will also really start to change. Bardzo dziękuję za te słowa. Ja też walczę po prostu w Polsce wśród, jestem nauczycielką języka polskiego, czyli właściwie bardzo dużo godzin spędzam z młodymi ludźmi i też walczę o to, żeby rodzice zaakceptowali to, że ich dzieci są neurotypowe, żeby zgłosili się po diagnozy, bo to jest po prostu lepsze życie, kiedy znamy scenariusz na to życie. Rich, powiedz mi proszę, tak z twojej perspektywy, mój partner jest partnerem, ma też ADHD, więc my mamy podobne metody działania. Ty jesteś neurotypowy. Powiedz proszę, co z twojej perspektywy jest najtrudniejsze w życiu z osobami neuroróżnorodnymi? Co sprawiało ci największą trudność? So firstly, that sounds like an eventful household that you live in. Uh, if you're both neurodivergent, I'm sure that's full of joy and laughter and chaos probably sometimes. Um, my biggest uh, tip um, or advice that I would give anyone um, is to approach things with curiosity um, and not judgment. It's so easy to assume that certain behavior, certain things that happen have meaning behind it. So for example, if if Rox agrees to meet at a certain time and is late or says she's going to do something um, and doesn't, it's really easy. And it was for 30 years, I had the world telling me that that behavior was meant that they didn't care or they were careless or you know, I didn't matter or I was being taken for granted. And it's really And it's difficult, right? But you've got to lean into believing that that's not true and approach in every situation with calm curiosity, with um, with, que with, with questioning and sharing their, their world. And that's probably my biggest piece of advice for anyone. Faktycznie dzieje się u nas bardzo dużo, ale na szczęście... Ja swój hyperfokus, skoro go mam, to potrafię go też rozpoznać u mojego partnera. Powiedzcie mi proszę, zatem co wam daje ta neuroróżnorodność w związku? To znaczy, czy są jakieś plusy ADHD, że czujecie, że to jest super moc? So, I think to be able to talk about the advantages, you first have to have been supported in the disadvantages. Sometimes we see people with the ADHD is a superpower narrative and that can be quite invalidating to somebody really struggling with no support. So me 10 years ago in debt, sat in a dark apartment because I hadn't paid the electricity bill, drinking problems, relationship problems. I couldn't have heard about the positives, but I can now. I've had therapy, I've had years of sobriety, years of wonderful uh, partnership. And two of my favorite things, there are many, but two of my favorite things now. One is uh, creativity, uh, just coming up with ideas to change the world or just to change my afternoon, painting, learning new skills, getting obsessed with badges, whatever. Like I'm just constantly on this new thing and I love that and um, that's probably why we wrote the book a crazy idea one afternoon and then also really interesting 
something I've been shamed for and have been ashamed of, sensitivity. So within our house, our family, I'm very emotionally aware of all of us and the kids and Rich and will often be bringing conversations to the table um, so there are no elephants in the room, no emotion gets ignored or shamed. And I'm very intentional about making space. Um, since Rox has been diagnosed, um, you know, that, that whole journey that, that create that, sorry, that was a lot of work, a lot of learning, a lot of research, a lot of honesty, a lot of conversations, but I think, you know, and, and that's going to be lifelong, but, but let's say we're out the other side of it. What it has unlocked is this beautiful pair of complete opposites, complete opposites. And actually we've been able to create a life together that's everything that we were craving for. So I was working in a bank in a job that I hated with no real freedom, just structure. Um, and Rox was always had the freedom, but never had the structure or the stability. So actually healing some of this stuff and, and increasing self-esteem and self-worth enabled us to really lean into what was most important and, and complement each other's strengths and help each other's weaknesses. And create this life for us of just sort of happiness. Myślę, że właśnie to, jak się uzupełniacie, wybrzmiewa bardzo dobrze z książki, dlatego ona stała się takim hitem w Polsce. Jeżeli mówimy o ADHD, to wszyscy mówią, o, brudne pranie, czytałaś to? No oczywiście, że czytałam, byłam jedną z pierwszych recenzentek waszej książki, e, ponieważ też mnie pochłonęła z tą radością, jakiej, o jakiej piszecie, też o trudnych sprawach. Bardzo dobrze balansujecie między śmiechem a Właściwie takim poczuciem smutku i porażki, którą przynosi ADHD. No właśnie chociażby tym, jaki to jest duży koszt, kiedy nieustannie się spóźnia człowiek na samolot, bo nie wie jak działa czas. No i właśnie to jest moje pytanie do, do was. Według was, jak działa czas? Ja staram się znaleźć odpowiedź na to pytanie. Jest to pytanie bardzo adechadowe, więc myślę, że tylko osoby z ADHD mogą na nie odpowiedzieć. Więc najpierw proszę, Rox. So, time is split into two categories, which is now and not now. And that's it. That's it. So either I'm doing it now or it's not now. And if I'm doing it in the future, that's just not now. It might be five minutes, five days, five years or never. Um, five minutes can mean 45 minutes, could mean five hours, or it could mean five minutes. You never really know. That's how time works for me. I probably historically would have been able to answer that question really quite simply um, and uh, around how time works and how long things take. But actually what I've come to learn is that it's different for different people. What I thought was a constant, what I thought worked the same for everybody does not in fact work the same for everybody. Tak, żyjemy troszeczkę w świecie, w którym płyniemy przez mgłę, jeżeli chodzi o czas. Praktycznie on nas nie lubi, to znaczy przecieka przez palce, nie wiadomo kiedy. Zwłaszcza, jeżeli mamy zrobić coś, co nas bardzo interesuje. Powiedz mi, proszę, rok, co jest ostatnio twoją wielką fascynacją i czy te fascynacje dobijają Richa? So, that is such a great way to describe it, a fog that moves quickly if we're on something we like and if we're folding the laundry, it really, really slows down. Um, my latest fascination, there's a few. What do you think my... Uh, I mean, it's probably the, the mental health podcast still. I would say it's a pretty calm. Yes. <laughs> I think a lot of neurodivergent people find a special interest in psychology. I think it's possibly because we've spent so long misunderstood. We become obsessed with wanting to under understand ourselves and others. So that looks like for me getting obsessed with different authors or podcasts and just having to consume literally everything in that topic. So a recent obsession for me has been psychoanalytics, which is kind of, um, it's like psychotherapy, but it goes all the way back to Freud. And it's like really kind of 
deep uh, where things come from and it looks into dreams and there's all these wonderful kind of words that come with it. So I just become obsessed. And then every like time we have dinner, I'm trying to bring up these random psychological concepts and do quizzes on people to find out. And bless Rich and my stepchild, Seer, they will often watch YouTube documentaries, just hear me talk for hours about these things. And I know they're not interested but I'm so excited when I learn a new thing. So yeah, that's the current one, psychoanalytic therapy. And I think, does it kill me? Now, I don't think so. I don't think it kills me. But what is quite hard sometimes is bearing in mind, Rox has probably spent 40 hours of, of listening to podcasts and stuff. Um, and sometimes when she wants to talk about it, she can assume that I know the first idea what she's talking about. And I have absolutely no idea, which can often present as though I'm not interested. It's not necessarily that. It's just I haven't got a clue what she's talking about. So, and I haven't got the time to learn it either. Bardzo Wam dziękuję. Okazuje się, że goni nas czas, a z Wami mi ten czas bardzo szybko płynie. Nawet się nie spodziewałam, ale to chyba typowe dla ADHD. Chciałabym Was jeszcze po prostu przytulić na koniec. Czy mogę? Of course, we can have. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Oh, team up, team up. Thank you. Thank you so wonderful. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.